The battle continues May 1st at the second stop on the PSP Tour. So mark your calendars and sign up your team to take the field at the 2015 PSP Nashville Open. Watch all the action going down and broadcast live May 1st through the 3rd on PSPEvents.com. Welcome back. 2015 PSP Dallas Open. Two games remain here in the prelims. Chicago Aftershock is about to take on the Trade My Gun Outlaws. We're looking in the pits right now. There's Coach Mikey Bruno and Todd Adamson, who has come back to Chicago Aftershock. And this is a, uh, it's a big game for them. You know, um, it's going to be a new tournament tomorrow for the bottom eight teams as they slug it out to determine who's going to the bottom or the next, the uh, ninth and tenth Champions Division teams. Uh, for Nashville. Um, but Shock, though, really just to prove to themselves uh, they need to come out here and play a good game against the Outlaws. They have not had a first, uh, a good first two games. This game brought to you by Planet Eclipse. There's a great documentary series that they're doing right now called Artifact, uh, following Dynasty around. They had a little some segments that you might have seen if you've been watching the webcast this weekend during the lunch break. Uh, but they did one on the roster last year on Chicago Aftershock. So here we go, the Outlaws breaking out. Heavy up the middle, heavy guns, three guns up. And almost all the way up to the X off the break or to that center 50 structure, that A structure. And looks like good breakout for Chicago Aftershock. Nobody has been shot for either team. You know, it looked like I saw some, I saw somebody get shot coming up the middle there. All bodies still alive though. Nobody gets any kills on the break. Aftershock sending uh, Ronnie D's on out there to the Dorito side. So seen again playing that in, uh, inside can on the Dorito side. He oh, gets shot. Yeah, so so seen first to die for either team. Four on five right now. Lawhead, D's on, Velez, Woodley getting the start, and as well, so seen. All he gets shot by former teammate Cody Minkowski. Yeah, Cody Minkowski, he gets shot out of that Dorito side corner. He comes walking off. There's Velez. Velez, the victim of a couple untimely penalties. You know, the Outlaws are in a similar situation that uh, Aftershock is in, except the Outlaws just came up. You know, Shock's one of the most legendary pro teams it's ever been. But the Outlaws also, you know, they come into this league, and look at Osborne chewing people up in the snake right now, doing a good job. Trying to put the first point on the board for his squad. Uh-oh, minor penalty for Chicago Aftershock. And I think that might have been Lawhead. Yep. So, <laughs> Velez give Lawhead the dagger eyes on his way off. I think it was Lawhead. Well, Lawhead, I think that it, that is Lawhead, right? Ripped his pack off? Yeah. Yeah, that's got to be Lawhead. So, it's a minor penalty, and it will come off the board. Because Trade My Gun uh, was walking, trudging through the mud, try to hang that flag up. But Shock was able to get their body, and minor penalties come off the board if you're able to get into the box before you lose the point. So it shouldn't affect them too much, but it did destroy their entire D side in that point. So first point, going to Trade My Gun. Yeah, good job the right outlaws. there. Also by uh, Tyler Osborne getting into the snake and getting that kill. <laughs> David Weinrob closing it out. So Aftershock continuing their slump. Just not getting anything going out here. This is a game that Chicago Aftershock should win. You know? On but paper, yeah, you got to give paper, it to Shock. On absolutely. paper. But, but trade my gun. I mean, they've been taking some, some lumps, you know, this weekend as well, but have also showed a lot of fight like they said they were going to do at the very beginning of the event. Um, Check out the event kill count leaders. Colt Roberts, Archie Montemayor, and Alex Rodriguez all tied at 23 apiece. Ryan Greenspan at 22, and Matt Derula from 187 getting on the board with 21 confirmed kills. Sick. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Alex Rodriguez, he kill, he's killed 23 in 17, played, uh, 17 points played with eight deaths. So as far as the G count is concerned, uh, you got to give Alex Rodriguez the nod there. But what an amazing performance by all five of those men for their teams. So two players from San Diego Dynasty, one from uh, X Factor and Archie Montemayor. I'm sorry, two with Colt Roberts and Archie. And then Dynasty's A-Rod and Ryan Greenspan. And then 187's Matt Derula. I want to say that uh, Colt and Archie were in the top five in Dallas last year as well. I think they both started off really hot. 
And, uh, you know, Archie really took off, but I, I'm pretty sure I remember seeing both of those two well, guys. Well, I'll tell you what. And we're in Texas right now, and, I, and I'll argue this till the cows come home. I don't think anyone could put up a valid argument that anybody other than Colt Roberts and Archie Montemayor are the best players ever to come out of Texas. Yeah, I won't argue with that. Aftershock right now, sending Sosin back up the middle to that can on the Dorito side. He's going to be looking Dorito side this time instead of Snake side. Again, Aftershock in those two tall towers. You know what I think about the thing is about Aftershock is like they got some sneaky guys, right? Sosin, for as big as he is, is actually a sneaky guy. Well, you coach but Chris Sosin on Infamous. Yeah, exactly. I think this is a great field for Sosin, but he's running there and looking to lock off. Like, Aftershock, they run to these spots, and then they stay in their spots and try and fight. How the outsides have been opening up, if you're middle, if you're playing heavy middle, how the outsides open up is you guys, you make moves through the middle. You don't just go to those towers and then stay there. You know, Sosin uh, sees Mikowski get up there. He's going to come through, and they're going to not trade out. Oh, Cody Mikowski's still alive. Sosin sure thought they traded out. Cody uh, uh, Sosin's begging for a penalty on that one. And we might find one. Yeah, Sosin's going to get one. And Sasu's going to get it. Sosin's going to get a talking penalty. But Mikowski came through. I thought they were about to trade out. So did Sosin. And then Mikowski bunkered him. Did he get another one? Tough to tell from here. But, I mean, it looked... I, I couldn't see the, the front of uh, Mikowski. Well, no, I mean, did Mikowski shoot anybody else afterwards? Yeah, it looked like he got pain on the, on the back bunkers on the D side of the field. There was two bodies to shoot at. I think he shot the farthest one back because that was the first one he could pick up. Well, he was still alive at the end of that game. And it was so seen that w they got the minor. Yeah, he got so, D's on and lawhead. Well, that's when you got to be careful. You know, if you... you <laughs> I mean, if I've always, I always, anytime I was working with players, I'd always say, "Look, if you really feel that you got, you got skunked on a bad call, then tell the guy uh, your, you know, what's on your mind." However, do so knowing that if you're, <laughs> that if you were hit and the ref thinks that you're hit and the other guy's not, you're gonna get a talking penalty. So, well, let's get an uh, update from the referee. Number 81 from AfterShock will be charged a minor penalty for talking after elimination. Yep, that's Chris Sosin. So, yeah, so he was, like beg was, he was begging for it. Before that happened, Chris Sosin needs to be making that move. Well, there's Cody Minkowski on. Yeah, okay, you, and you called it. But then Cody beats him to the punch. They're yeah. pretty much the same spots. Same, oh, pretty much everything's going down the same way. But uh, that, that man on your screen right there, Cody Minkowski, making the move. Who's having success? Look the, at the, impact. The aggressors are the having aggressors, the success. Exactly. You know, on if, this layout, for sure. If you're getting out wide, the middle opens up. If you go up the middle, wide opens up. You go up in the middle, start causing chaos. That's when you, uh, your outside players that aren't being able to get to these wide spots because it's muddy, because there's good gaps, that's when they play off the confusion and they get their spots out wide, right? But right now, Aftershock is getting to those first spots, and they're trying to gun battle everybody. You know, I wouldn't put Todd Adamson in that spot, but at least when he was going up into that spot, he was trying to make those moves through the middle. They need to get guys like Lawhead, who's sneaky. We've seen him get up there and do that. Well, I, but I agree with you. I think so. Well, no, or somebody, but, you know? but Sosin is sneaky, too. I, we've seen that out of him before. That's one of the reasons I like Chris Sosin. He's yeah. a big guy who plays small. He's a big guy who loves to gunfight. But I think he's letting his love for the gunfight kind of eat at his aggressive ability. Yeah, and once you get past those big towers in the middle, though, all the bunkers are little. Well, you're getting, your, you're getting your, your, uh, an answer to your request as uh, Todd Adamson is out there right now. So let's see what he does. Let's see if he, if he at least tries to make that move again. But Aftershock finally pushing hard up that Dorito side. Oh, but they lose one quick, though. Yeah, they, they lose, lose another one. Quick. And here comes Outlaws. And it looks like Davey oh, Simmons is going to wear it in the back of the head. McKenna, Out I think, is still alive over there in the corner. Outlaws came to fight today. They, they talked about it yesterday, and they absolutely came to fight today. Streaking down the D side, playing very aggressive. And here's Johnson. Clint Johnson trying to finish off the last player for shock. Brian McKenna stuck in that back bunker. That's a small bunker. Oh, he might have. No. Did he get a shot on? Uh, it looked like he almost um, got one on Berkeley. Berkeley. So that's Fred Berkeley dead center of your screen in the stand up can on shock side of the field. And he's going to close the gap here. Yeah, Sosin comes out of the box and gets torched. So Berkeley takes down McKenna. 
And he's going to walk that flag in. So it's been all trade my gun so far. Aftershock forced to concede yet another point here. Cody Mikowski, the kill count leader for trade my gun. Five confirmed for him. Yeah, it, it, I think if you're Bruno, it's time to really start shaking things up. You know, I, so seen is tall. He's really good shooting on the break. Yes, he's sneaky. But I, I play him in that back center. Stand over the top like they've been doing with Sloviak. Like I was going to say with Sloviak and 187. Stand over the top because... The angles like or right Bane's and impact. If you go t up to the back center, then um, you have okay angles, right? Or if you're standing in the flag station, your angles are not good. They're a little bit better once you get to it. Uh, if you're standing up over the top, they're a lot better, right? But I mean, I believe so seen back there in the back center, standing up over the top. I'd send a guy like Wozni, you know, up into the into the A right away because Wozni wasn't getting anything done over here on the snake side. He wasn't smart enough to be able to make those reads and make those quick bumps. Um, Dizon is your fastest guy, and you know that's kind of being neutralized by the mud. Uh, by the mud. Uh, Woodley is another guy um, who they've been sending up the middle who should be able to make those uh, moves through the middle, but he's not launching either. And there was Berkeley so assassinating uh, Sosin, who came out right into Berkeley's gun, and then Berkeley smartly yeah. Just moves up one little notch to the next bunker and is able to take out McKenna. Yeah. So you there's need Mark somebody. Johnson on your screen. Actually, you know what I would do? I'd put uh, Sosin in the back center. Lawhead would be my shooter and edger on the snake side. Um, I might even try Ronnie Dizon or Kirk Wozni up the middle. And then uh, the most dependable Dorito guy was, uh, feels like McKenna. You know, or Woodley. Woodley last year with Heat, him and Greg Sewers together were dominating people. Get Woodley out wide. Make him your Dorito guy. He knows how to ha attack hard the Dorito side. Give me Woodley on the Doritos inside of him. Woodley definitely knows how to attack. Or send Woodley up the center. Or send Woodley and D's onto the Dorito side. Sosin in the middle. Lawhead on the snake side. And then uh, send Wozni up the middle. Or or Woodley up the center, man. We've seen Woodley with Heat. He, he was great up the center but guy. But he's not launching. He's been going to that center tower and then not launching. Finally, now he comes up out of that uh, center tower. Well, here comes the attack now for Aftershock in the center, and that's Lawhead. Lawhead's going to get one. Another one's going to die off the confusion. That's Clint Johnson. Now Woodley finally made that attack. He's getting up in the uh, – he's in the center can on the snake side he's, now. He's got to be careful. and that He's got that angle on the outside. It, it, that spot's going to get real small for him. To pay, especially if Outlaws, and they did, they filled the spot in the center. Well, he's got to be careful. So Outlaws have three bodies. They have the Dorito corner, they have the Dorito side can, and the big Dorito one. Well, and Wozni has to, over here on the snake side, he has to put the fear of God, or Velez has to start putting the fear of God in the corner bunker over here so he doesn't wrap around and shoot Woodley. So seen, or I'm sorry, you got Woodley, Wozni, Simmons, and So seen in the back center. Wozni is over here on the snake side. Woodley's up in the middle. Simmons going to get involved. He's going to go up to the little wedge in the Dorito alleyway. Here's Wozni. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was Wozni. I thought that was Velez. So Wozni's going to put his head down. And this, that's going to allow uh, the outlaws to come through the middle. As soon as Wozni dives into the snake. And Woodley better get out of there or he's going to get a penalty. So Wozni, it's up to him now. He's going to have to save the day. Shot. Off the far side, so just one body left for the Outlaws. So Wozni has the ball over here, snake side. And he's able to get that crossfield shot. Nice job by Wozni clocking over here for Aftershock. In a must-win situation. They have to win this point here. And it looks like Wozni's going to clear the field. Nice job by Kurt Wozni. Yeah, I mean... When you're going down again, if you're going down to the end of the snake looking for bodies, you haven't heard anything, probably haven't said much. I mean, every team that is smashing people out here is talking about how important communication is. We knew that it was going to be like that coming into the event once they took away the coaching rule. So, I mean, if you weren't, of all the drills, you know, we talk about all the drills, all the changes that people made in practice, what they're doing to be better, to be successful out here. Yeah, fundamentals. You have to master the fundamentals. Okay, but you also can do communication drills. You know, like there is plenty of things that you can do uh, oh, to yeah. go out and work on. Well, one of the old school communication drills. Anytime we used to have a rookie guy that wasn't talking, we'd just take his gun away. Have him play a point, but take his gun away. Now the only weapon you have is your voice. It's the only thing you can do is talk, yeah. which makes you then understand that how important that that skill is. Wait, you're going to take my gun away? Yeah, I'm going to take your gun away because I haven't heard a peep out of you, and you're not saying anything. <laughs> no one knows what the hell's going on, so you need to get it up. And, uh, and that's one way to do it. So 
I remember Dude. my first practice in the Ironman, y'all took my van away. <laughs> No, nah, you were always loud, man, so loud. Yeah, but I didn't understand the concepts, you know? We went out to that first practice, uh, you know, with the Ironman. And, yeah, everybody was like, you need to talk, you need to talk. And I'm like, cool, like, what do you want to talk about? And I was, oh, you want me, I got to tell you what's going on, what's in front of me, what I see. Rich Telford was, like, yelling at me, you know, like, tell me what you see, what is going on, what do you want to do? Well, and then the guys around you, what we would do is that if that was the case, we'd take your gun away or we just start asking you questions mid-game. And this is obviously a little bit different format of paintball, but still the fundamentals are the same. And we would say things like, you know, what'd you eat last night for dinner? How's your girlfriend doing? You know, we just ask you questions and force you, or then if you didn't answer, we'd just shoot you in the back of the head because <laughs> uh, it was practice and you could do stuff like that. But Not bad, wipe it off. <laughs> yeah, but uh, there, there's uh, Jeremy Song, definitely looking like an outlaw. <laughs> He's got a bandana, a cowboy hat, and some aviators on. Yeah, or uh, or a village person. Yeah, but, um, you know, trade my gun. The outlaw's looking real good right now. <laughs> They're looking really solid. Chicago Aftershock finally putting a point on the board. Uh, good job by Kurt Wozny. And, uh, and also good job by Lawhead to go up in there and cause some confusion to get that kill and then get another one. He didn't get it, but he still caused that confusion that enabled him to get another one. Looks like Woodley takes a shot off the break. Uh-oh, not looking good for Shock here. Snake side off the break, losing two bodies. Woodley takes the walk, Wozni. So now it's just Simmons, Sosin, and Lawhead out there, but they were able to shoot two players off the Outlaws. Outlaws really know what they're looking for on their attacks. Oh, they're gonna lose another body. Yeah, but Lawhead dies as well. Jordan Davidson getting shot off the Dorito side. Looks Lawhead probably traded out with him. Here comes Sosin. I mean, Sosin's really good at finishing games too. Well, that was one you of the know? big pickups for Shock. And at, yeah, Sosin coming up here. And when Sosin came to Shock, he added that closer element to their yeah. attack. Yeah, he's way better as a closer, you know, or an attacker. You know, I mean, I just don't like him as a stand lane holder. You know. I mean, yeah. he could do it, but... It's not utilizing you know, his skill set to yeah, the best of the advantage of the exactly. team. Exactly. Yeah, so there's Sosin on your screen right there. And uh, just looking at Cody Mikowski. So the Outlaws have a player in the snake corner. That is the last body. It's Davey Simmons and Chris Sosin. They got to be smart about closing this game out. Well, yeah, they do, because <laughs> if they win this point... Uh, then they're going to go down by one, still with a ton of time. Cody Mikowski, it's only a two-on-one, so if Aftershock closes slow or engages one at a time, then it is possible for him to pick somebody off and take it to a one-on-one. -on -one. Aftershock got a talk in this situation. Saw this happen to Thunder a few times. And Mikowski's going to get blown up as he tries to make that desperation run from the snake side corner into the snake. Sosin, pick him apart. Nice work by Chris Sosin to close the game, though. Yeah, you can tell he's frustrated right now. And Davey Simmons. Davey Simmons uh, shot out David Weinrob in that point. And uh, Chris Sosin shot Cody Mikowski and Fred Berkeley. So, one point game now. Yeah, it's Chris Sosin getting a check. Going to be 3-2 to two after shock. But, I mean, I definitely feel like Aftershock started to get a little bit more aggressive. Check it out in the Planet Eclipse replay here from the Eclipse Factory team. Aftershock, and that Sosin gets that kill on Berkeley, and that really that's what really opened it up. That took it to a one-on-one, -on -one, and then Mikowski just, like you said, as a desperation run, if he had made it into the snake and then might have been able to get a drop on Chris Sosin, but it's kind of asking a lot, asking that you know, Sosin just flat out misses you. So as uh, Outlaws get ready for this next point, they are only up by one right now. We're going to listen real quick and then head to a quick commercial break. What? Hey, hey, Cody, 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 Kennedy straight on at that guy. Kennedy straight on at that guy. The, the Delta.
Yeah, and we are back here. Trade my gun. Playing really well. Getting a uh, three to two lead on the breakout. Looks like trade my gun. Gonna go hard towards that Dorito side. Get shot on the break, trying to go to the Dorito one. Woodley, see this is what we want to see out of Woodley. You know, maybe because he hasn't seen the kills come off in front of him, but you know, come up, shooting towards the Dorito side. I think he did have an up, up the center run through yesterday. I'm almost positive. So we need to see a little bit more out of that. <laughs> well, down by Here one, comes. there's Woodley. Big yeah. pickup for Aftershock coming over from Houston Heat. Yeah, get creative. Let's make some moves. But again, playing as a team, you know, like like when we watch Impact play. You see, you see a guy get shot off a side, and then that side gets a dude gets buried. If there's one other guy, he gets buried on that side of the field. You know, the teammates just put him down, allow the guys to come through the middle, get better angles, and look for kills. You know, it's not just everybody out there looking to go make a big move. You know, when when teams are playing well together, then it's really hard to make moves. When teams are playing individually, Cody Mikowski runs through the middle and bunkers half your team. <laughs> well, he didn't make it this time, but he <laughs> almost got Woodley, was able to absorb the absorb the pressure. He tucked in. He uh, luckily shot Minkowski. And now he's looking for his own move. Another body drops, though. Lawhead gets shot, and Outlaws lose a body off the Dorito side. Outlaws with two bodies still alive over here. One in the middle in the tall tower, one in the inside snake temple. Frederick Berkeley coming up through the middle. Frederick Berkeley gonna saw Davy Simmons in half, trying to make a move. Now Berkeley by himself as Johnson gets shot out of the snake, but here's Woodley. It's Woodley and Berkeley. One-on-one -on -one situation right now. Yeah, for the tie, if Woodley's able to pull it out, or can Berkeley take a two-point lead for his team? Very close to each other. Berkeley's right by the flag, too. I mean, that's the whole point of the game is to get that flag and tap it up on your opponent's flag station. Oh, <laughs> and Berkeley. Berkeley. He lost the game of patience right there. Oh, did Woodley he? made him pay. No, I think he traded out with him. No? no? no Woodley's coming to get the flag. I don't know. <laughs> Woodley was, had that kind of like lackadaisical little look to him, but that's a nice job by Woodley, though. Yep. So Woodley winning that one-on-one -on -one to tie it up for his team. That's why they picked him up, is to do things like that. So Woodley's going to trudge through the mud, tap up that flag, and we're going to have ourselves a tie ball game with uh, seven minutes and 50 seconds to go. John Woodley with a three-pack. And actually, no, John Woodley with a four-pack in that point. Shot Weinrob, Mikowski when Mikowski tried to run through. Clint Johnson, A.J. Lawhead getting that other kill on Dave, uh, Jordan Davidson. So, nice work by Chicago Aftershock, slowly but surely making their way and tying this game up. That's the difference when Woodley's aggressive, man. I'll tell you what, not waiting at that tower for things to happen. Getting up into that center pillar, trying to make a move. Yeah, it's tough though, man. I mean, both Dizon, Woodley, you know, Todd coming back. Um, looked like Velez was going to leave in the offseason, but he comes back. Um, so with Woodley, though, it's it's one of those situations where he's still finding his footing with this new squad. Yes, he's played on Aftershock before, and uh, yeah, he spent a lot of time on Heat, a huge team, won some tournaments, had some big points for them. But you know, trying to come in and find your place in a new institution because uh, you know it's, it's a different team than when he left it. So Woodley may be starting to find his form here, which would be huge for Chicago Aftershock because they need him to ha they need him to have a big year. Yeah, I think they'll figure it out too. Yeah, you know, like we said, you know, it's not over yet. Um, who's ever the top two teams that come out of the Challengers playoff will still be in the Champions Division for Nashville. So, Aftershock not out of it yet, but, you know, they, they're playing Outlaws right now. They're going to get another shot at them, possibly. It's going to be Top Gun Union, Boom, Revo, Thunder, Shock, Outlaws, Legion and AC Dallas. Actually, I mean, that's a pretty tough lineup just by itself right there. You know, these teams, uh, out of all you've seen, Maddie, who do you think could be the top two teams to come out of the Challenger playoff? Revo, 
played a little bit better today. It's tough, we'll get man. Get back to that. It's it, yeah, we'll get back yeah. to that in a second. But here on the breakout, here's yeah. what you wanted, Todd. Chris Sosin comes up, but gets his head peeled off there in the 50-yard line. <laughs> I'm a bad coach. <laughs> bad calls left and right. Well, Clint Johnson comes off, Sosin out, and Woodley comes off too. So just Lawhead, Dizon, and Velez left for Chicago aftershock. Outlaws still with four bodies. Clint Johnson took the walk. Mark Johnson still on the field with Dave, uh, Jordan Davidson, Cody Mikowski, Fred Berkeley. Lawhead able to get out wide on the snake side. He's in the second tower. Outlaws launching down the Dorito side. Going to get two bodies. See, I mean, if one guy bunkers out you and your homie, then somebody's not protecting somebody else. You know, Mark Johnson gets shot in the melee, but Berkeley... He's still alive. He's going to be going heads up with Lawhead. That might be another one-on-one. -on -one. Oh no! Here comes uh, here comes Mikowski out of the back, and Berkeley going to shoot Lawhead. Mikowski Mikowski actually got shot by Lawhead, but then Berkeley shot him up. It was a two-on-one. Man, you know Lawhead's getting fired up. Lawhead's definitely the emotional leader he's for always, Chicago Aftershock. Yeah, he's always fired up. Let's look at this replay here. There's that big move down the D side of the field for the Outlaws. Gets one, gets two. And that's what happens when there's no coaching on that side of the field. Yeah. Back at, yeah, Last year, about three steps out of his bunker, or one step out of his bunker, the whole crowd would have went, he's coming. Those guys would have turned around. The first guy would have stuck him, they, or they would have traded out. And that's the whole purpose behind that, is to allow these guys to, you know, allow the skill to shine. So, back to my question, out of those teams, who do you think is going to come out of the Challenger playoff, Matty? I don't know, man. I, I saw a lot of inconsistent paintball out of those teams. Yeah. Um, I think Thunder's hey, got what, a shot. Jamie, what's the line? They, they look pretty good in that last game a little bit. Um, who knows? Maybe AC Dallas? Uh, no, no guarantees, that's for sure. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, it's going to be a different tournament for them tomorrow because they're going to have now have uh, fine-tuned some things. So it, that's what it's going to be up to. It's good. Whoever, whichever of those teams figures out tonight what their problem was the past couple days and why they're actually going into the bottom eight instead of the top eight, whatever team does the best homework tonight and comes out with a reinvigorized spirit to come out here and, uh, you know, and execute their skills, that's the team that's going to make it. Because it could be any of them, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, seriously, really pull them out of a hat. That's, so that's, the, that's my point, though. My point is, is because it could be any of them, any of them have the skill to do it. So it's who's going to have the, the, the right mindset and who's going to do the best homework tonight to try to fix their deficiencies. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great so point. It's, so it's up to the leaders of those teams. So it almost comes down to who is going to be the best leader to emerge tonight in those meetings and figure it out. Who said they gave a great emotional speech earlier? Was that uh, Scott Knight? Oh, I can't remember. He might, might need, have been. He might need another one. <laughs> and Shock losing Wozni. Woodley looking to attack. Woodley getting a kill. Coming up to the A, getting another kill. Might have gotten another one. On the fill out to the Dorito side. Woodley going to town right now. Mark Johnson getting smoked. Here comes Woodley through the middle of the field. He's got Clint Johnson in his sights. Clint Johnson comes over the top, and trades out with Woodley. Woodley blows him to bits. I think Woodley's finally starting to find his groove. That's what I'm saying. This is what we needed earlier. He was just holding too long, you know? Like, he, it's all about the timing on this field. Watching everybody play, you know, up through the middle this weekend, it's just all about, you know, making those moves at the right time, getting the, the consistent help, shooting people on the break. But, I mean, attacking the center on this field in this mud, you got to get crafty, you got to make good reads, and you got to be ready to launch. The guys that are launching through the middle, like we, like we saw Z uh, Zach Yakimek Launching, earlier. but with the, the, right, the right read. Exactly. If you don't have the right read, you're going to get torched. Yeah. Um, even Nico Hyde had some pretty good moves through the middle. Yeah, Alex Nico Hyde Rodriguez, from AC Dallas. Yeah. You know, oh, Alex Rodriguez looked, like, looked phenomenal for Dynasty. You know, the sick reads, making the right moves at the right time, getting the right guys, you know. It's just... Well, let's it's look like at it here. Eye in the Sky it's replay. The Planet Eclipse Dragon replay here. Dragon There's Woodley, calm and composed, down. comes through. Yeah. And then takes out that last player. Who catches a couple extra bonus balls. You can see he looks across the field like, who was that? I'm going to remember who that was. So tied up at four apiece. 
five minutes and 52 seconds to go. We're going to be right back. Stick with us. We are back here, 2015 PSP Dallas Open. I'm Matty Marshall alongside Todd Martinez. And these two teams we're watching right now, Chicago Aftershock and the Trey My Gun Outlaws, they have uh, fought to a standstill here. Four apiece, five minutes, 52 seconds to go. Out on the field for Shock, Lawhead, Velez, John Woodley, Davey Simmons. And, oh, bad start for, there's a good, yeah, that's just a, that's a frustrating thing to watch, man, if you're an Outlaw fan. Bad start. It's going to take one of them off. They're going to lose another one because he got shot. Looks like a third one. And it looks like there's only, this is going to be a very quick point for Chicago Aftershock. Chicago Aftershock getting a gift out there right now. Things starting to go their way a little bit. <laughs> the paintball god shining down on Chicago Aftershock right now and sending a lightning bolt to uh, the outlaws. Hey, you know, when you start... Doing the things you're supposed to. Sometimes the breaks go your way. There you see Ginter and Sosin. There's Woodley. And Wozni. So you see that bad break from the Outlaws, which pulled off. Uh, one of their players immediately, and then another one got shot or either got pulled because of the early start. And then you look at Chicago Aftershock, they also got a bad start too. And then watching it through, so. Again, this game brought to you by Planet Eclipse, big supporter of paintball all around the world. Definitely want to check out their new series this year. It's uh, bringing back the Artifact series. So they've shelved the roster for 2015. They brought back Artifacts. So you're going to be seeing a lot of cool little stories about uh, different teams in the Planet Eclipse universe, starting out with San Diego Dynasty. They already have uh, some Artifact Fragments, is what they're calling it. And uh, that is out from uh, the lead up to this event with San Diego Dynasty. I'm talking about the departure of Oliver this year. And it's a slightly chilly, muddy day out here, a little outside of Dallas, Texas, at Cousins Paintball Park. It's been overcast for the past couple days, and probably be a little bit more of the same tomorrow. It's kind of cozy over here, where we're at. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did you get a warm cup of coffee that I didn't get? <laughs> no, but that'd be great if we could. So five minutes and 24 seconds to go. Looks like some of the outlaws drop off the break. We got a goggle shot. Lawhead coming up the middle. Lawhead looking to feast. This is what I'm talking about. Get that kill off the side. Start to put the pressure. Look to make the move. TMG has a body up far. In that wing, though, on that Dorito side. I'm not sure if Lawhead knows that guy's there. Woodley's calling his kill. And I think Woodley got one. He's going to go onto the snake side of the A. He might have got another quick one off that Dorito side. There's Woodley right now. You see eye in the sky. He's going to try and get that shot in on the wing. There's Lawhead right behind the A. Yeah, it's shaping up in that center again. Aftershock crossing it up. Kind of looks almost like they're waiting for the run through, Todd. They're not even gunfighting out of there right now. They're just zoned up. Yeah, well, Aftershock finally started coming with it. So, you know, I think that put, uh, there's Berkeley getting shot in the goggles. You know, kind of put the outlaws on their heels a little bit. Now they're worried. And Jeremy Salm is just going to blow that horn for the outlaws, which gives shock. Uh, game point almost. 
Uh, six for Aftershock, four for the Outlaws, four minutes and two seconds to go. So right now, Aftershock one point away from taking this race to seven victory here in the second to last game in the prelims. And though, though the, uh, though after, w I like what I've seen out of Shock. I'm, uh, we're seeing fight, Todd, that, and that's the biggest thing that we needed to see. We're starting to see them capitalize on some mistakes. Um, and then also, though, the Outlaws are still fighting too. You know, this, uh, this is a really good match. Yeah, I like what we're seeing out here. Uh, Shock finally starting to shoot some people on the break as well, though. So that's definitely also slowed up the attack uh, of the Outlaws. So there's McKenna. Stone Cold McKenna. <laughs> so Aftershock getting ready for this next one. Throw down with the Outlaws. Four minutes and two seconds to go. Shock one point away from victory. We'll be right back. We are back here, Cousins Paintball Park in Dallas, Texas. Both teams, five strong, trade my gun, backs against the wall. They have to score a point here or they're gonna lose this match. Outlaws getting out wide on the Dorito side all the way to the pin in the corner. Shock losing one body early. They're gonna get Dizon back in the game over here. He comes out to the first temple on the snake side. Shock with some space, getting a check though over on the Dorito side as well. Looks like Velez coming off, Cody Mikowski getting a shot on him. Referee with a check on Woodley in the middle. He's still clean. Outlaws He's lose David Weinrob, who comes out to get a spin. Uh, Woodley catching one in the bottom of the goggles. Lawhead going to fill in with him. Dizon getting shot on the bump. Looks like we got Jordan Davidson, Frederick Berkeley. Mark Johnson bumps out here to the snake one. Outlaws not going to go away quietly. Just under the three-minute mark uh -oh. is a four-on-two situation but Jordan, right now. Jordan Davidson gets shot off that D side, but it's not looking good for Shock here in this point. Nope, Lawhead's walking off. It's just Davey Simmons now. So Davey Simmons looking at three Outlaws. Mark Johnson, he comes into the 50 snake. And Simmons gets shot out of that 40 Dorito. So Mark Johnson, Cody Mikowski, and Fred Berkeley finishing off. A good kill counts for those three guys. Berkeley seven, nine, ten actually for Mikowski, and six for Mark Johnson. Very respectable. So not going without a fight. The Outlaws pulling within one here with two minutes and 21 seconds to go, which is absolutely enough time for them to tie it up. So Shock not wanting to give this one away here. Also, as this game is slowly but surely drawing to a close here, Todd, I'm getting real excited about the match coming up next. Edmonton Impact and uh, Los Angeles Infamous are going to be thrown down for the last game of the prelims. It's hard. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, Infamous is playing very well. They have a lot of guys stepping up. They feel very confident right now, but Impact's look pretty much flawless. Yeah, Impact is just been disrespecting people out here the way that they're running all over the place just slicing and dicing cutting through the middle shooting people to bits uh, I mean it's going to be a tough game but Infamous also playing well uh, this this match is going to determine who plays Dynasty and who plays X Factor tomorrow in the morning so, so you know something at stake over here because Dynasty's playing really well after X Factor also playing really well so and speaking of Dynasty we're gonna have Ryan Greenspan come up to help us do some commentary for this last game so stick around and uh, we're gonna head to a quick commercial break and then we'll get right back into potentially the last point of this match
I love the way it fits and it's not really loose. I don't feel like, man, I hit the ground, it's gonna come off because it really fits my face. It, it's kind of like this one was made for me and it's kind of crazy that I think that way, you know? Probably, they, they probably souped it up, you know, just for me. They ain't tell me, did it on the low. They said, this one's Jerry's. I believe it. Hey man, I don't put nothing past nobody, man. It's a conspiracy, I'm a conspiracy guy. Hey guys, I'm here with Brian McKenna in the Aftershock pit. Now, you guys are in a timeout right now. This is a crucial point. You can win it or Outlaws could tie it up. Going into this, I hear Mikey Bruno talking about how important it is to key up on one specific spot. Can you tell us when we have these breakouts that are heavy in the middle of the field, what is the most important spot to really key up on and try to get a kill from? Well, I think if we're going to key up on anybody, it's going to be that uh, Temple on the snake side because it's, it's an easy shot for a couple guys sitting in the back center. So we're trying to key up on him. Or Dorito side, we're going to try and key up on the uh, the race over there. We're just trying to pick on one guy so we are up one guy off the break, really. You had a slow start, and you guys have been able to come back. What do you? Uh, what did you guys adjust in order to make sure that you could get this lead here? Um, I think what we what we talked about in between the two games is uh, with all the mud, it's kind of reminding us a bit of MAO last year. So um, you know, we we figured we might have to slow it down, not really play uh, our fast, crazy paintball, and slow it down, and try and shoot somebody off the break. All right, we'll see if Shock can get the win right here. Back to you guys. So under 30 seconds to go before the start of what could be the last point. Trade my gun one point away from tying this game up. Shock one point away from victory. Lawhead, Simmons, Wozni, Woodley, and Velez to play for Shock. And out on the field for the Outlaws, Mikowski, Davidson, Berkeley, Weinrob, and Johnson. We're going to get Shock on your screen. There's Wozni in that player 90 jersey. Does he make it? Oh, does he make it? Nope, Wozni getting shot on the break. Woodley, Woodley gets shot. They take out one of the players from the Outlaws. I believe that was Davidson. Three bodies left alive for Chicago Aftershock. Mark Johnson. Over here on the snake side for the Outlaws, he got out wide. Berkeley coming up through the middle. Outlaws losing a body off the Dorito side, Jordan Davidson. Well, losing those bodies is going to slow the roll, Todd, because, yeah. again, they don't have a lot of time. So we'll see if Lawhead, Simmons, and Velez can dig deep here and stave off the attack of Mikowski, Berkeley, and Johnson for the Outlaws. Oh, Lawhead gets caught, searching in that center. <laughs> and that could open things up, but Berkeley gets caught as well too. So all of a sudden we got a two on two right now. It's gonna come down to this right here, 117. Lawhead and Velez, Mark Johnson and Cody Mikowski for the Outlaws. Johnson over here, Mikowski in the back, Johnson over here on the snake side. He's gonna jump into the snake. Does anybody pick him up? Yes, I believe he just did pick him up. Lawhead is dead. I believe that is Simmons over there on the other side. Simmons and Velez. That's Velez right there on your screen. And yeah, that is Davy Simmons. Velez in that center tower. Mark Johnson getting comfortable in the snake, but it's 40 seconds left. They're going to have to make this a quick one. Ooh. You can see the gunfight on your screen, and it looks oh, like they do takes drop the body. Out. Velez yeah, gets shot. I think he's having enough time to tie it up. We might see an overtime. Actually, there are no overtimes in. Uh, no, there is. A, there'll be an overtime, but then if the overtime goes three minutes, there will be no one-on-ones. So look at this. That's the outlaws. Mark Johnson. He talked about the fight yesterday. He said, "Hey, win or lose, we came here to fight. That's what this is about for us. Yeah, we're new. I know we're gonna get welcome to the pro league. We don't care. We came here to fight, and we just saw it right now." So nice work, Mark Johnson and Cody Mikowski able to save the day here for the Outlaws with 17 seconds left. We are most likely headed into an overtime period here, depending on the kill count off the break. That's when the fast point happens. Wow. So, giving themselves life. Straight <laughs> my gun Outlaws. Trying to get a win here in the prelims. Just to get one, just to get a win. It always feels good to get a win. You don't want to go 0 and 3. Or 0, 2, and 1. Or 0 and anything. 
Still waiting on in the wings. Play this last match of the day. Edmonton Impact and Los Angeles Infamous. So. I think uh, I think almost I think for sure unless uh, we see two majors or something crazy we'll be headed to an overtime period. Yeah, shock trying to figure it out right now. They got so seen and Woodley. Mikey might go for the win, man. That would not surprise me if two to, to the center 50 off the break, something crazy. I mean, Mikey's heated up right now, so. Yeah. He might be trying something crazy. Here comes Lawhead. Well, they got 15 seconds before the start of the point. Lawhead, Dizon, Sosin, McKenna. Are they missing one? They got five guys? No. They have four. They have a timeout, don't they? I don't oh. think they're going to take it. Oh, then they got to be playing. Well, no, they're going for the win with four guys. Under 10 seconds. Look for a major. Never know. And also the major will carry on over to overtime. So seen still alive. And that is going to do it. So the end of re we we have our first tie of the tournament in the second to last game. So we will head to a three minute overtime period. And if there is no winner in the three minute overtime period, then we will have a tie. <laughs> What a crazy game, though. <laughs> like, let's send four dudes out and just go for it. <laughs> uh, aftershock. Gotta love it. They got some bodies. So the question is, who is Aftershock going to send out for their five to play this overtime point? You got to send Woodley out. Probably Dizon. Simmons has been alive. Simmons has been Simmons, alive. Simmons has been alive. Has I don't know how many kills he got. Three minutes is not a lot of time. Yeah, it's it's enough. But we saw a couple uh, we saw a couple ties last year uh, in overtime in the prelims. Who are you sending out for uh, Shock? If I'm trading my gun, I'm sending Mikowski, Wine, Rob. Berkeley's been playing good. Mark Johnson. Berkeley's got, Berkeley has eight confirmed kills, so I'm definitely putting Berkeley out there. Minkowski's been on fire. He has, he has 11 confirmed kills, which is ridiculous. So for shock, I'm sending so seen Woodley, Lawhead. Give me Velez. Velez. For Lawhead sure. for sure, Velez for sure. I want Velez, I want Lawhead, so seen Woodley, and Dizon. That's my five. I'm with you. I know we haven't seen a lot out of Dizon in this match, but. Yeah. Or maybe Simmons. Maybe Simmons for Dizon. I feel like people are making that Dorito one. You know, the first big Dorito. Mm -hmm. But never, I haven't really seen uh, Dizon get in there very much. You know, Davy Simmons doesn't seem to have any problem getting in there. Well, they are sending Simmons out. So yeah. Simmons, Lawhead. Velez, I might get my five. Woodley. Yep, I got my five. <laughs> You're hired. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably going to not do as good a job as Noel Khan, but. <laughs> <laughs> so three minutes on the board here in this overtime period. Six to six is the score. And again, on deck, Edmonton impact. And Los Angeles Infamous. That's going to be a good game. The game we just watched was a good game, too, between damage and crew. Well, let's check in with Lauren Kelly before we get into this overtime point. Hey, guys. I am with the Outlaws coach, Jeremy Sum. Now, by this time, at this point in the game, you guys have figured out what's working for you and what is not working for you against Aftershock. Going into this point, what are the most key positions for your guys to get in in order to take advantage of this last point? Well, to be honest with you, we're more concerned about the break. They go to the Washington, which is a bunker out here on the Snake side, and they go to the Delta, which is a Dorito spot that we both know they're going to, and they're successful at those spots. At that point, we'll spread if those kills are there. But other than that, we'll probably play inside just like they are, and we'll just try and win some gunfights. All right, we'll see who's going to take this win. Back to you guys. 
Well, that's what it's going to come down to. I mean, Jeremy is right. They all know where they're going, pretty much, for with you know a few variables here and there. But it's going to come down to who executes on those off-the-break shots, if you can get those kills. And if not, well, then whoever wins the gunfights, you're going to win the game. Mm -hmm. so you're going to hit shock on your screen. Mikey Bruno giving Simmons the nod. Yep. Four out of five ain't bad, though. <laughs> All right, here we go. Heavy Dorito side for the Outlaws. So it looks like Simmons dives into that. One body down for the Outlaws. D side bunker. So it looks like initial uh, advantage aftershock as David Weinrob gets shot out. Davey Simmons gets shot out going to that first Dorito. Woodley standing up over the top of that center uh, tall cake behind the A. Davey Simmons, though, yeah. So uh, it's four on four. Oh, it looks like Woodley got shot, too. Oh, so Mark Johnson came around and put one on Woodley. Four on three. So seem Velez and Lawhead going to have to hold it down for the next two minutes and 20 seconds just for the tie now, or can they win a gunfight even up this body count? Those are the three players left alive, stuck in the pocket in the center of the field for Chicago Aftershock. That is going to allow the four players left alive for, uh, for the Outlaws to get out wide here, but they're also in the pocket too. Make move made on the D side for the Outlaws. There's the four players for them. How's it going to go down? The Outlaws going to try and make a move. Johnson in the Snake Temple, Mikowski in the back center, Jordan Davison and Frederick Berkeley in the center and the Dorito for the Outlaws. Mikowski makes his move in the center and then now shifts towards the D side. So they're loading up on that D side of the field. Oh, oh no. Up. Looks like Frederick I Berkeley. I think that was so seen, but here comes the Mikowski move. So Mikowski running through and he's going to shoot uh, so seen in the pack. Nice move by Cody Mikowski. He grabs the ball, runs past the 50-yard line, and then gets another kill, too. So what a great job so far by Cody Minkowski putting the team on his back. And it looks like the Trey My Gun Outlaws are going to take this victory here in overtime. They definitely have enough time to hang it up, though. Lots of players left alive. I don't know. Is, is uh, Minkowski left alive? I think he is. He's walking to the flag. Minkowski, last player left alive, too. I don't think. Is Jordan Davison still alive? I think Davidson is alive. Yeah, he is. So there's Davidson. So they had two players, but, you know, they had four. Two of them got shot in the chaos when, when uh, Minkowski crossed the 50-yard line. But I'll tell you what, man, you want to identify the hero of the game for uh, Trade My Gun, it is for sure Cody Minkowski. Not only did he have 11 confirmed kills to start this point, but he came through big in the clutch and got himself a three-pack. And that yep. is the highest confirmed kill count that we have seen here in the prelims from any player. Yeah, keep bringing them up. 14 confirmed kills for Cody Minkowski. Beautiful work. Also have to definitely say that Jordan Davison played extremely well here in this last point as well. And throughout the whole game, nine confirmed kills for him. So Coach Jeremy Shaw should be very happy with his, uh, his team's performance here. Fought a tough Chicago aftershock and able to uh, to take the victory. And what a seesaw game back and forth. Initially, Trade My Gun went up. Aftershock clawed their way back, tying it up. Then they took the lead, and then Trade My Gun ended up tying it up to take it into overtime and then winning the overtime points. So that was a pretty exciting game. Yeah, I mean, almost here. We're sitting here looking at this Impact Infamous game, and, you know, Trade My Gun Chicago Aftershock come out here, and they have a back and forth battle. You know, they're going to have to fight it out tomorrow. Both of them are going to the Challengers playoffs. But, I mean, not giving up anything at the end of the day. Both teams taking some ugly losses. You know, it's it's cold and it's muddy. And, you know, it's really easy to give up sometimes. But neither of these teams uh, willing to just lay their jerseys out on the field and let it go. Both of them came out here and fought hard. And hats off to trade my gun for the way that they fought back to come back, send this to overtime, and then get themselves a win here in the Pro Division uh, yeah, and the MVP for sure, Cody Minkowski, yeah. without a doubt. 14 confirmed kills in this match. The highest confirmed kill count uh, for any, any player on any team in the prelims. Let's check in with Lauren Kelly before we get to this last match of the prelims. Hey, guys, I'm here with Mark Johnson from Outlaws. They just won in overtime against Aftershock. That was your first win as a pro team. How does that feel? This feels awesome. Yeah, um, it's... Um 
was a, a, a tough match, a very slow, patient match. It's kind of like a NASCAR race. Coming down t Daytona, it's turn four, got to be patient, wait on your turn, and you can win it. And that's what we did. We were patient, we waited on our times to get down the field, and that's we, we were able to put the points on the board when they were needed. Absolutely. Coming into this, you guys were hungry. You wanted to prove that you deserve to be here on the pro field. How do you feel? This was your first win. You weren't able to win yesterday, but how do you feel about uh, your, how you guys performed this weekend? Did, did it match up to your expectations? Um, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, I mean, and as any professional sport or any professional player or anything, anybody who competes in sports, they always expect to do better than if they come out and not do very well, win one match all weekend. So we're excited about that because we accomplished one goal was win our first match and compete with one of these better teams out here uh, that had been in the division for so long. And we did that. So we'll go to the next goal, which is tomorrow. Try to win tomorrow to make it back into the champions. Absolutely. Well, you definitely had some fans cheering for you in the stands. Now, I want to talk to you about that tie point. When you ran down the flag with, I think, less than 20 seconds on the clock, and Davey Simmons was still on the field, what was running through your mind during that moment? Well, uh, my teammate Cody was uh, communicating with me the whole time out of the back center. I was having a really hard time getting my pods out of my pack because it's just covered in mud, and I couldn't get it out. So I literally had no paint in my gun. I had Davey's side. I couldn't shoot him. But I saw my boy running down and put two in the side of him. And I just took off and took the flag because I knew that's what we needed to do. Well, you got it done. Congratulations on that win. Outlaws beat Aftershock in overtime, 7-6. to six. Next up is our last match of the day. It's going to be Impact versus Infamous, so don't go anywhere. Mark your calendars and get ready for the battle at the upcoming stops on the 2015 PSP Tour. The Nashville Open goes down May 1st through the 3rd. Mid-Atlantic Open June 18th through the 21st. The Chicago Open takes place August 7th through the 9th. And the biggest paintball tournament on earth, the PSP World Cup, runs October 15th through the 18th. Sign up your team now and get into the fight. Watch all the action on PSPEvents.com. You don't want to miss it.